of us know about uh, a triangular wave, right? So, generally, when we want to generate a triangular wave in uh, electronics, like using the electronic circuits, we do it by first generating a square wave, okay? And uh, from the square wave, we will um, have um, another circuit to uh, ramp up the voltage or ramp down the voltage uh, so that we actually generate something called a triangular wave. So it, it, it will be here. Okay. So this is how we generate a triangular wave. It's simple, right? So the frequency of a square wave that is generated will be equal to the frequency of the triangular wave that is coming out okay so this actually <clears throat> is also called as a sawtooth wave uh, in some cases but uh, let's call it a triangular wave for this understanding okay now here let us see uh, the circuit which generates this and how it need to be integrated into the LT spice. So, this is the circuit which generates a triangular wave, which is actually a combination of a, a square wave generator plus integrator. Okay, so we have a square wave generator which we have talked already about in our uh, uh, channel okay you can see our old videos this is a square wave generator which actually is uh, having a rc component here which uh, determines the um, rise time of that particular uh, um, output where we get the square wave now this particular square wave, um, uh, this particular RC is called a time constant. So, based on how the charge and discharge of this capacitor happens, we get the output square wave. <coughs> uh, and uh, one thing that we have to remember is that uh, this basically is a comparator here. And the output will fluctuate between 5 volts and minus 5 volts. So, this uh, is already explained in one of the video in our channel. Now, let us look at the next step to generate the triangular wave. So, to generate a triangular wave, we are using something called integrator here. So, this is an integrator circuit where we have a capacitor in the feedback and then there is a series resistor um, on the non-inverting terminal of this particular op amp. Okay, uh, we are using LT1001 op amp for this particular demo. Here, what happens is when you have a uh, high here, okay, there will be voltage that will be developing across this capacitor because the current takes this path R3 to C1, okay. So, and then uh, the voltage across the capacitor that is being developed um, is nothing but the output voltage of this particular node, okay as simple as that so the simple integrator operation of a op amp which we know and then in an integrator we already know that there will be a series resistor that will be added here okay uh, um, uh, sorry a parallel resistor to capacitor that will be added in the feedback path now what is the need of this resistor is this particular op amp that we have will have some bias currents or offset uh, <coughs> currents right so those when, when nothing is operational the currents that pass through this particular uh, um, flow out of this particular pin will pass through this resistor and you uh, if you don't have a resistor it will charge this capacitor and you will have uh, voltage that is being developed now if you have this resistor instead of capacity it passes through the resistor and then you will not have the problem with this bias and offset currents uh, generating unnecessary output voltage that's the entire use of this particular resistor added and in theory the value of this resistor 
will be 10 times of the uh, resistor that is on the non-inverting terminal. That's the basis of selection of this resistor. The selection of components for this particular uh, circuit uh, is uh, explained in one of the video for which we will place the link in the description. Okay, and then now how to select these resistors? So for simplicity, what we can do is select the resistor which is equivalent to the feedback resistor here, and then uh, sorry feedback resistor here, and then uh, select a <coughs> capacitor which is less than the value of the capacitor that you have uh, near the square wave generator as simple as that okay now we can adjust and play around with these values uh, uh, so that we get an exact triangular wave output out of this uh, uh, particular square wave output so that's the entire operation and we are having uh, two voltage generators here and uh, mm, we are running a transient analysis now let's look at the output let us try to run this and first let us try to capture the uh, output of this particular square wave generator so you can see here we have a square wave that is being generated at the output of this particular circuit now uh, in this chain of circuit, um, the, uh, the input is provided uh, with this square wave for this particular integrator. And when we try to probe the voltage here, you can see uh, the triangular wave, right? So we can adjust the uh, voltage levels of this particular triangular wave by playing around <coughs> by varying the uh, capacitor um, charge by varying the value of the capacitor and now one point which we also discussed in the square wave generator now if you see um, generally for the square wave the output must be between minus v sat to plus v sat which is nothing but 5 volts um, is the saturation voltage of the op amp here but if we see that it is only 4 volts to um, get to that voltage we have to increase the gain so the, the gain of this particular uh, uh, feedback is 1 plus r2 by r1 this is a positive feedback right uh, so <clears throat> 1 plus r2 by r1 this is a non-inverting configuration and uh, we have a gain of 1 plus r2 by r1 so increase the value of this example okay let us play around and you can see the value increases slightly okay so um, we can we can increase increase the voltages further to get the desired output voltage or square wave as per our requirement so this again depends on what you are expecting what uh, you want as an output so that you apply to the next chain of circuits and <clears throat> you can see the triangular wave um, so this basically is nothing but integration that is being applied here and we generate a square wave so hope we gave a glimpse of the circuit what we are doing here um, please post if you have any questions please try this practically on uh, a <coughs> breadboard and see how uh, the values are being generated Thank you.